Hey, I'm Sarah, this is Abby, and welcome to Aswool Unlimited. If you're new here, I'm a scuba instructor and I moved into my van in 2021 after losing my dive shop in Indonesia due to shutdowns. I've been on the road diving around the US, Canada, and Mexico for the last two years, teaching on YouTube along the way. Welcome to my beautiful but very windy home on the edge of a cliff in Mexico. Oh my goodness, we're gonna close the doors, otherwise you're never gonna hear me. Lights, camera, action, somewhere. <laughs> While we talk about low visibility rescues, I'm going to be treating my brand new mask from Nex Underwater Products. Before we get into it though, I want to remind you that I do still have spots on my Komodo dive expeditions, which are happening next year, June, 2024. You can see all the details for that trip on my website, which I've linked in the description below and the pinned comment. Let's get into it. One of my Patreon subscribers asked me about low visibility rescues because she was in a situation where one of her buddies started to get really Stressed. And although she handled it correctly, she was curious about my tips. Low visibility is a tricky thing because it messes with your brain. You can get really disoriented and it can be scary. Let's see how. A much more controlled way of doing this is with toothpaste and a toothbrush and just scrub, scrub, scrub. Or dish soap also works. Also just scrub, scrub, scrub. But I'm into chaos, so flame it is. <laughs> Whenever you're going into low visibility diving, it's important to talk about how to deal with it in your dive briefing. This includes a discussion and agreement upon how close you're gonna remain as a buddy team, because with good visibility, you may feel comfortable being further apart, but with bad visibility, you really have to stick close together and maybe even make contact during the dive. You wanna talk about the different ways that you're going to communicate with one another. So that could just mean holding signs close to each other's face so that you can actually see it. That can be a little bit aggressive too for some people, so you need to clear that with them. It might be better to just have tactile conversations, so squeezes on the arm, something like that. Yes, burn baby, burn. If the visibility is so bad that you need to to swim while keeping contact with one another. One, discuss whether it's worth diving if the visibility really is that bad. If you do need to make contact with each other as you're swimming, discuss how you want to do that. I personally, like if I'm the most advanced person in the dive team, to be on my buddy's left side. That way I have access to their inflator hose, their dry suit valve, and I can hold on to a part of their BCD without bothering them, right? Like staying out of the way. And I can still have access to all of my gear. Let's see here, we've got some, a little bit of black. I forgot to fog this up beforehand so that you could see how bad it is. It's just how masks are when you first get them. With any kind of rescue, before you jump into anything, you always want to take care of yourself. So with low visibility, the biggest help for me has been exercises and training that I've done out of the water. I find that meditation has been the key for keeping me calm in stressful situations. For those of you who don't know, I do teach yoga and meditation on Patreon, so that's just, you know, shameless plug. It is really worth it to spend some time in a personal practice that helps with relaxation. Doing that kind of training beforehand will give you the ability to pause and of course a deep breath before taking action. Now we're gonna get to the good stuff. I'm gonna keep burning. It looks so good. The challenging thing about dealing with someone in low visibility is that you're not going to get all of the visual cues that you would normally get. You may not notice when your buddy is starting to exhibit some of the signs that they're stressed out and need to go up. If they go into full panic mode and you guys are close together, just like you discussed in the brief, they may turn to fight you. Logic has left their brain. So your number one thing as the rescuer is to protect yourself. You want to protect your air, so that may be by turning away from from them and kind of keeping space, you may be able to position yourself so that you're behind them and on their tank. That will keep you in control, in contact, out of harm's way. That's best case scenario, that you're able to protect yourself and maintain contact. If you've ever been diving in really bad visibility, you know you can lose your buddy in an instant. Like all of a sudden they're there, they're like, I see them, they're there, and then poof, they're gone. Like, oh, 
what happened? Just gone. If you're not able to, in the tussle, maintain contact, get up to the surface slowly and safely. Even if you've been able to maintain contact by getting behind the diver and on the tank, you still have to watch out for you. The second that that panic diver realizes that they're alone, they may decide to bolt to the surface. You may be able to help slow down the ascent by completely deflating your BCD, your dry suit. Maybe you can deflate their BCD. You could let go of their tank and drop down, hold on to their fins and slow down their ascent. They're still going to get away. There will come a point where you just need to let that happen. You've done as much as you can at that point, more than I think most rescue divers would actually be able to do in a real situation. Ultimately, you're going to just need to deal with them at the surface. Possibly your panic diver will have relaxed just because they're at the surface and can take off their mask and rag and see. If that's not the case and they're still in a state of panic, then you just continue with your rescue training that you've learned. You have a panic diver at the surface. Other people may have different takes on this, and if you do, please share your perspective in the comments below. Whenever you do make it to the surface, alert other divers in the area that you have a panic diver in the water and that this is not a drill. There may be someone there who can support you in the rescue, especially if things get worse. If you get up to the surface and your panic diver is not up there with you, then you have two different scenarios to work with. One is that you can see bubbles breaking at the surface, and obviously the other is when you cannot. There is no sign of them at the surface whatsoever. If there are bubbles at the surface, then you have a diver who's just swimming around lost. Get on top of their bubbles and descend using their bubbles as a reference. When you find them, make contact from behind or the side so that you're still protecting yourself. Then do your best to get them to the surface. If there aren't any bubbles, either the water movement is making it impossible to see them or you're dealing with a buddy who has stopped breathing. This is why it's important to call for help when you first get to the surface. By calling for help early, you've hopefully gotten somebody to get ready in their gear to help with a search. Because in this case, you should link up with a buddy to effectively run a search pattern appropriate for the conditions and topography. If you want a refresher on search patterns, I have a video on that and I've linked it in the description below. Let's talk about worst case scenario if you're in the no bubbles situation. You're completely alone. You're just out there, you and your buddy, in a remote place. If I've lost my buddy in low visibility and I can't see bubbles at the surface, I'm getting to shore and calling for help. By myself, I am not an effective rescue team for searching for a body. So I want to get back up to the dive site as soon as possible. However the situation ends up, a really important thing to do at the end of this whole thing, when you guys are out of the water, everybody's okay, everybody's calmed down, down, you need to debrief what happened. It's nothing to be ashamed of. All of us have been scared or nervous in the water at some point. And debriefing with your dive buddies is a really good learning exercise. As the rescuer, instigate the conversation. Okay? It might be kind of embarrassing for the victim to talk about it. Get details on what happened and how they think they can avoid feeling that way in the future. Then you should share your observations so that both of you get a full picture of what happened during that dive. Keep it simple, keep it kind. Reassure the panic diver. It can feel really embarrassing when something goes wrong. Be open about times when you've been scared and how you dealt with it, because then people won't feel so alone. A lot of people don't like to admit when they've made a mistake or when they've had a bad day. And I think these conversations where we share those moments are how we build a community that is more uplifting instead of like ridiculing each other for having a bad day. Okay, cool. Be kind, basically. Finally, my biggest piece of advice as a rescuer, encourage the panic diver to get back in the water as soon as possible. You don't want this bad experience to sit and fester and become a fear. It may not be feasible for them to get in the water again that day. That might not be wise or practical, but offer to go diving with them again very soon after. Too often I've heard of people having a bad experience and then they go years not diving again and they lose the passion for it because they got spooked. So let's help each other to get over those fears, learn from these kinds of experiences, and that way everybody just keeps diving. All right, 
that's the video. So now I want to hear from you guys. Do you have tips for dealing with panic divers in low visibility? And do you have any stories? Because really the stories are where we can learn from one another. So share those in the comments below. If you want the opportunity to request videos like this, I take requests from my Patreon community. As I mentioned before, we're going to Komodo June 2024. So think about joining that and I will see you in the next video. Okay, love you, bye. There's no lights. <laughs> sure. One, you can. Oh, yo, 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 yo.